Hey, what's happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping back into the channel today here at the Rust Belt Mechanic. We've got things ripping and rolling in the X3 today. We're gonna to be doing some performance upgrades to this thing, finally. Uh, we've got a couple of little things to measure that. We picked up this new draggy device from the side-by-side -side blog guys online. We're gonna be checking out the zero to 60 times, both stock in this as well as after we do a little bit of upgrades to it. Stay tuned. So I know I said performance mods, but exactly what are we gonna be doing today? From Evo Motorsports, which is an amazing company, they make some great professional performance modifications for side-by-sides, especially these X3s. So we've got some really great stuff. We're going to be going up to, I believe, a stage three kit on this build. We're gonna be adding some charge tubes, blow off valve, uh, tuning. We're gonna be doing some really cool stuff to it. But before we get into that, we really need to get some baseline numbers for the machine and seeing where it's at. And how are we gonna do that one? I don't have any kind of a dyno or anything to put it on, uh, but we do have this new thing that I picked up from the side-by-side -side blog guys. It's called the Draggy. So this is a really super accurate GPS activated uh, device. It just sits here on the machine, uh, magnetized on the bottom, and it's gonna be able to connect to satellites and it's gonna be able to get our zero to 30, zero to 60. Uh, also gonna be able to pull G sensors, also reading the grade of slope at which you're sitting on. So it's gonna verify whether you're going uphill or downhill to whether it's gonna be a good run or not. So the very first thing we're gonna do, we need to get some baseline hits on how quick this thing is exactly. And we're gonna do zero to 60 base times on this one. Uh, we're gonna do some warm up sessions and this is just factory settings tuned in here. So 195 horse, nothing else added into it. And then we're gonna step it up one little bit at a time. We're gonna go up one by one and we're gonna see where we're at. So first things first, let's go out on a test drive and uh, let's get some zero to 60 times on this thing. So we're gonna pull our first zero to 60 here. We've got our draggy all set up here on the phone, so we're gonna set that back off to the side. Uh, but we're gonna get some front point of view here, and then we'll see what kind of readings that we get off the draggy. say invalid but that's just being set because the slope was at 1.5 percent which it was not really great for the machine it was at a worse slope so uh, we'll do another test hit here hopefully get a little bit more flat ground and uh, see what we get on reading wise Our best time yet, 
we are at 4.39 seconds, zero to 60. Our uh, zero to 30 was 1.52 seconds. Boy, that is cooking. We are in two wheel drive on this one on flat surface. I don't think four wheel drive is really gonna make much of a difference, but you know what, science, we're gonna see what we can do. as well but we were not quite as good 4.58 seconds on that one um, yeah looks like we we're just our 0 to 30 was better but looks like after that one was a little bit worse from the uh, 30 to 60 portion of it so pretty cool to be able to see these kind of numbers on it I was really surprised by this one but we got our baselines this thing cooks it pretty nicely but we're gonna see what kind of upgrades we can do to make it even faster. So hardware wise, what do we have here from Evo? Well, hat, sweet, that's for later. Uh, we've got some new sweet, awesome charge pipes. So new charge pipes with all new hardware for us. We've also got a new clutch spring for some better engagement on the clutch. And then we also, grab it over here, We've got a new blow off valve that's gonna go in conjunction with the charge pipes on this. Also have a map tuner, which we'll show here in a couple of minutes, that's gonna go with everything. We've got programming, tuning to go with all of this stuff. All in all, we're going up to stage three today. Uh, stage three, normally you don't have to have the charge pipe tubes, but this will give an added advantage into that package. So. That is what we're going to be installing first today is the charge tubes. First things first, we had to get the back section off of here and then we're going to be taking off some exhaust and some other parts to get access into that. So I'll let me rip some stuff off of here and we'll show you once we get access. All right, so now we've got access all quick like to the back side of our engine. All we literally had to do is take out our muffler here, which was actually pretty simple. Uh, it had four 13s with nuts on it that held into this bracket right here onto the back side of it. Also had to take the heat shield off of that top right there which had four 10s holding it on. And then the inlet to the exhaust right there was held on just by four springs like these right here that you just had to pull off and hold them in. No bolts there to hold that one on so super simple to be able to get the muffler off there. Now we've got access to a lot of the top side of our motor. As you can see, this is our oil fill throttle body right here. So uh, this one going from the throttle body from right here all the way up into the intercooler back in that area. That is one of the charge tubes we're going to be changing out as well as one into the turbo, uh, which is in behind that one. We'll see if we can get some better access to that from here once we get this one out or if we can get better access from in between the two seats since there is a removable panel there. So let's get this one off right here first. All right, now that we've got our large charge tube out that went from the throttle body up to the inner cooler right up there, now we've got access to our smaller charge pipe, which is right here that goes to the other side of the inner cooler and right there to the turbocharger. Both of them have the access clamps pretty accessible from the back so I don't even think I'm gonna have to get access to that side from the inside portion of the vehicle even though I could if I really needed to so we we'll get this one charge pipe off because we've got the Evo ones here slap this up here we've got the Evo one that's the smaller one that is gonna go from the intercooler to the turbocharger right -tra. and then we've got the larger one right here that's going to go from the intercooler on that end new blow off valve and everything is going to go on there and then that end is going to go into the throttle body so we'll get that one done get, let me get that uh, smaller charge tube out and start putting the smaller one back in now also remember we do have all brand new hardware from evo as well we're going away from all these worm style clamps right here 
getting rid of them and we're going to these fancy ones right here these bolt clamps uh, going to our standard 11 millimeters for you guys who are used to all these on the charge tubes on a lot of the diesel trucks like we all are so a lot nicer clamps not going to pinch on any of the hoses and everything going to account for the larger diameter and the larger thickness of the charge tubes as well so we'll get the charge tube onto the turbo from there to the intercooler first and then we'll work on the larger one for the blow off valve all right so we've got our small tube in now before we get to our large tube right here we need to be putting in our blow off valve so let's get into the blow off valve kit we got this really sweet Evo blow off valve for this nice kit for it. Uh, it comes with the blow off valve, the tube that runs the intake, external filter, clamps, and a couple of zip ties for it. So all the necessary parts that we're going to have for it. So first what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to uh, put our blow off valve, put our little cover onto it, and then we're going to put our nice little hose right here the smaller end is going to go off to the blow off valve and then we're going to be running the larger end to the necessary fittings here in just a minute to the intake uh, but before we put the hose and everything on we'll put the blow off valve onto our charge tube right here we'll get that installed before we put the charge tube in once we get the charge tube with the blow off valve in then we'll be able to run all of the necessary hoses and everything that we need to the intake and we'll do that one all right, here we are, charge tubes all installed up to the intercooler, down to the throttle body, new clamps installed, and the blow-off valve was put onto the tube prior to installing it. So now we need to hook up our blow-off valve. We put the long hose that came with the kit onto it already. The smaller end went onto the blow-off valve. The and with the larger tube is going to go into our adapter which will go into the intake manifold right here so as you can see there's already a plug here from the factory this 30 Torx we're going to take that plug out we're going to use the o-ring that is on this plug already and we're going to transfer it over to the new hardware piece that has a barb that is going to fit this right here put a clamp onto it and that's how our blow off valve is going to get its vacuum intake to that one to be able to know when to blow off. Just like that boys and girls the installation of our charge tubes and blow off valve from Evo is done. We installed our bracket right back up into place that it's a good idea to do that one. Don't forget to put this one back up here to hold this charge tube up out of the way because we don't want it sitting down here on the top of the head or the fuel rail or anything like that. We don't want it bouncing around. And then our blow off valve, everything's all hooked up. New clamps and everything hooked into place. Got our Torx put back into the new supplied hardware on that one. So everything looks pretty darn good from here. We've got our clamps all tightened up. Make sure you have all of those tightened up once everything is into place, obviously. And all right, so that's about it on this part of it. So we're gonna put back our uh, tubes and our exhaust on this one, and then we're gonna get up into the tuning in the map tuner X on this thing. All right, now what we're gonna need to do is set our crack pressure for our wastegate, and to have access to that one, we're gonna pull our, our center console here between the seats, and we can see our turbo and the wastegate is right here. Yeah. The wastegate on this one, we're gonna be taking the clamp off of that hose, pull that hose off, and then we're gonna use our Mighty Vac right here, and then we're gonna set it to pressure. We're going to put it on the pressure and then we're going to pressurize the system until it gets to 10 psi is for this specific tune so we're going to set that one to where it's going to go right here and then how we're going to adjust it is here with this adjustment nut and we're going to, have to take off this end cap sleeve yeah. before we do that we're going to loosen this nut and we're going to pressurize this until we start to see the little plunger here begin to move. Right when it starts to move, that's our crack pressure. That's right when the system begins to crack open. So we want to be able to set that to this opening at 10 PSI. If it is too low, then we're gonna wanna put more tension on this rod. Take it off, unloosen this nut, and put the sleeve in another two turns, usually per PSI. So if we need to go the other direction, obviously, then we'll have to unthread it to let it crack earlier. But I believe factory it's set to like 8, 
So we're probably going to need to go two turns or so in that direction. So won't be too hard, pretty easy with the uh, Mighty Vac pressure checker. All right, guys, so shout outs in the way of tools on this episode. We have this nice light stand and group of cob lights from SP Tools. This one helped us get through the night of installing all our boost tubes. I was out here till like 2 in the morning putting all those on. It was all dark and everything towards the back of the machine. So this awesome thing helped us out. These cob lights I have done kind of a little review on before. They're amazing, a thousand lumens. They also have a setting, second setting for 500 lumens. And when you put four of them together on a tree like this, you really can't beat it. This thing is absolutely amazing. And since you can, uh, like I said, put it down to a 500 lumen setting, we can have these on and they have quite a long battery life. So really awesome on those. I'll put the link to those in the description. And then as well as our wrenches today, because these, and then our wrenches today. So these wrenches from SP Tools have been absolutely amazing. Also, they've been helping us to get into all the little nooks and crannies that we really need to. We've got the standard wrenches here, all in metric. Uh, grip really well, chrome's really nice. And then our ratchet wrenches over here, switching four degrees, because these are 72 teeth, so they only require four degrees or less of turning before they engage onto the next thing. Little stuff here in this drawer just because I have quite a few of them. Standard ones over there I don't use too often, but these are super nice. I will uh, put some links to uh, the metric set, the standard ones here, as well as the foam molded set here with these standards, metrics, and flare nut wrenches as well. So for the final piece of the puzzle, we needed to do some custom tuning. And who do we choose for that one? Of course, Evo Power Sports for this one. Uh, from Evo, we got their Map Tuner X Tuner, and then we also got a custom mount here from KMS Performance. I can put a link to that one down below. It just kind of mounts on the left side of the cluster right here. I actually, uh, this lower screw right here, I kind of had to oblong the hole to get it to line up exactly. And then the cable just goes from here at the base of the map tuner down around underneath the steering wheel and then actually plugs into the uh, component locator connector underneath uh, that little section right there. So then all you'd have to do is plug in your map tuner and that just plugs it directly into the Can-Am back over there. And then you've got everything for programming, service, adding vehicles. All you have to do, the first time you hook this thing up, it's only gonna have like one app here and for adding a vehicle. You'll add the vehicle to it, and then you need to take it back to a computer where you'll download the software for the MapTuner X, and then you will download all the software for that. At that point, then you'll get a hold of who you purchased it for, in this case through Evo Power Sports, and whichever um, tune that you get for it, they will then install it onto here. At that point, then you will then go to programming and you will tune the vehicle. It asks you a couple of little questions, just asks you to have the key on for that one, so make sure you have enough battery power to do that one, and to the tune. So for this one, we have gone up to our stage three, which ups it to require of 93 octane fuel which we were running already because around here in Ohio we really can't find 91 around here so we were running 93 anyways so we've got 93 octane in this uh, now for the recommended clutching of this setup for the stage 3 they recommend that you put in the orange primary clutch which increases the clutch pressure and increases the um, RPM in which it engages up to 2400 RPM I have not done that yet on this specific one because we're going up step by step just to see exactly where we're gonna be at in every single thing that we add on to it so now for the judgment time on seeing what stage three will do and this is just with the charge pipes we put the charge pipes on and the blow off valve we've added a couple small things to it and at that point now we're going to go ahead and test it with our draggy like we did before uh, before we were able to get zero to 60 in about 4.4 seconds so with this setup let's go ahead set up the draggy and see what kind of results we're going to get with this stage three setup without the other add-ons.
the second try with this one, and actually what I'm starting to kind of smell in here is, uh, I think I'm starting to smell some belt issue. So, I have a feeling that it really is necessary to put that orange drive spring in, because I think we're starting to get some belt slip right off the line. It's not hooking up nearly as well as it probably should be for this tune. I can feel the... I can feel everything just kind of slipping a little bit. So we've got a little bit of work to go on that one. I have a feeling that we've got a lot more to be able to get in the way of grip in both the belt and the tires on there. We should be, I'm guess, skirting right around low fours for that tune if we're able to get a little bit better grip in that and the belt. But you know, that's what I'm saying. We're working forward in increments here on this one. We're doing a couple of different things. Let's turn this off so you can hear me a second. So yeah, like I'm saying, we're doing this in increments here. We're gonna be doing it step by step. So we've got another couple of steps moving on here for this one. The next step that we're gonna be doing is we're going to be adding the drive spring for the trans. So the clutch will engage better in the primary. And then we're also gonna be adding two-step launch control for this thing so we're able to build up some more boost without that clutch engaging right off the bat so that should be uh, a lot better for the launch on this thing as well we've also got some sweet exhaust to be adding for this as well we're going to be adding the captain's choice exhaust from evo power sports as well it's going to be one killer setup on this thing each individual step you guys will be seeing along the way Hopefully we'll get some better numbers along with those ones. are enjoying this content if you guys have any questions feel free to put them in the comments down below or email me over at the rust belt mechanic at gmail.com uh, i think that's about all we've got for today i appreciate you guys tuning in and as always you guys stay awesome